Howdy folks, today we are going to do an intro to Ethereum using Remix. So Remix is the name of the IDE for Ethereum that's going to let us write smart contracts, compile them, and even send them uh, to a blockchain that we want. So when we get here, we have two environments, Solidity and Viper. So these are both languages to write smart contracts with. We'll click Solidity, it's the most common and probably has the most support. So we have a tabbed environment over here on the left. We can see here auto compile is ticked on and this one is a file explorer. So let's make a new file and try to output hello world. So I'm going to click the plus and I'll name my contract.soul for solidity. So here I have hello world.soul. We can also click on ballot test. This just shows you some example functionality um, when using solidity, but we don't need it. You can remove that if you want. Delete that file. Sure, why not? Okay, so back to hello world. So we need some keywords to get started so pragma solidity and then i need a version number 0.6.4 so what is solidity let's just have a look here so read the docs you'll find the solidity documentation and we can see at the top here 0.6.4 so this tells me the latest stable version of course, you can use older versions. Here we go, 06x. Uh, introduce a lot of breaking changes. Make sure you read the full list. So in the docs here, you can get all of your uh, technical details about how to actually use Solidity. So if you look up an older contract on GitHub or something, you see like 0.5, um, be aware that you might want to set your compiler back or you might want to update the contract if you're using it for testing purposes and can do that. Okay, so to get started with our contract, we need the contract keywords. So every contract has this. And then we need the name of my contract. So this one's going to just going to be hello world. And by convention, I'll make it the same name as my file. So let's go back to the compiler tab. And Auto compile in this case has been ticked on, and I know that my contract has compiled correctly because I don't have any warnings here. In here, if I try to do something, like let's say I try to return one, immediately I'm going to get a warning here, and so it says that I need a declaration before I can do this, among some some other things. So that's kind of nice. Auto compiles. Okay, so I have kind of an empty contract here. Well, it is it is empty. Um, so let's go to the Deploy and Run Transactions tab. And this button is where we can actually deploy our contract. So contracts in Ethereum, first they must be deployed. And then secondly, you can interact with them. And so I said that you have to poke a contract. It will lay there dormant on the blockchain. Uh, or wherever it is until something comes along and interacts with it uh, particularly usually you're looking for something and so you have a contract address and you go and interact with it um, so let's go ahead and click deploy and we can see that we have some output down in the terminal here we have a green tick and we can click on this hello world and we can see some status about our contract so here we have a contract address. This is different from a personal address that you might be using. Every contract has its own address and if you wanna interact with it, you need to know that address in order to do so. Uh, the from key, this is me, or this is my um, Remix browser account right here. And these accounts are up here that have already been laid out for me. So I've got five accounts by default and now these are not real accounts these are just test accounts and we can see my first account is already down below 100 we have already spent or consumed some ether and that's right here in the gas 
of deploying this contract. So we have a transaction and execution cost in order to actually put the contract on the blockchain. This here is my limit or my maximum amount of gas, as you can see up here, and it is currently set to 3 million gas. Um, moving on down, decoded output. So if we do have any output, we hopefully will be able to see it down here. Okay, so how do we get some output here? So we have hello world and we want to, well, let's just try to return a string hello world. And no, that's not going to work. So what we have to do here Okay, so how can we actually output hello world? That's going to be in the next part.